Bible scholars, it's day 13 on our 40-day tour through the Gospel of John. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know I'm learning a lot along the way, and I hope you are too. So, as a young rookie pastor here at this new church called Lutheran Church of Hope, I stood up one Sunday, this was a long time ago, to preside at the Sacrament of Holy Communion. It was a communion Sunday, and at that moment, much to my shock and terrible surprise, I realized that I hadn't prepared the bread and the wine. And I also realized in that moment, I wasn't sure we had any bread and wine back in the sacristy because I forgot to check. I'm kind of a bit of an absent-minded professor sometimes, so it's a really good thing that God has put a whole team of wonderful volunteers uh, around me and, and a staff and others, and we all have different gifts. My gift is not always in the details. But I decided to come clean with the, our new church back then, and so I mean, what else could I do? I said, I am so sorry, it's time for communion, but I've don't think we have any bread and wine. In fact, I know we don't. So one of our charter members, a great guy named Ray, stood up in the back of the congregation and he says, I think I got it. Don't worry. Hold on. And he runs out to the car and he grabs a bag of croissants that he was going to eat later that day with his family and some grape juice boxes that he had for his kids that just happened to be in his car. <laughs> God provides. It was one of the most memorable communion services that we've ever had uh, before or since at Hope. I'll certainly never forget it. God provided, uh, yesterday we looked at the story of Jesus feeding 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. When the world said there's no way, God provided a way. God provided, as we also looked at yesterday, because John 6, it, it parallels the Exodus, so, Exodus story, the central story of the Old Testament. God provided for his people as they wandered through the wilderness giving them manna from heaven heaven each and every day. It's not that anybody could have expected it any more than a young pastor couldn't have expected somebody to have croissants and grape juice in his car so that we would be able to have the sacrament of Holy Communion even when the pastor forgot to prepare it. God provides. God provides for us in ways that we don't always see coming. As we pick up the story here in John chapter 6, Jesus has just fed 5,000 and then he walks on water and he ends up at Capernaum on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And the crowd says to him in verse 25 of John 6, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus replies, I tell you the truth, you want to be with me because I fed you, not because you, under not because you understood the miraculous signs. I don't want you to be so concerned about perishable things like food. Instead, spend your energy seeking the eternal life that I, the Son of Man, can give you. As usual, and John's Gospel picks up on this, people are asking questions from a worldly perspective and Jesus is answering from a heavenly perspective. We've picked up on that rhythm by now. But it's worth noting that again here. But then Jesus kicks it up another notch. He says at the end of verse 27, For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. In Jesus' day, if a, if, if a royal figure wanted to send a message to somebody in another kingdom, uh, that king, for instance, would take the signet ring, uh, the emblem on that signet ring uh, of his kingdom, and he would have the message written, rolled up on the scroll, and then the wax of a candle would be put on the scroll to seal the message. And before the wax was hardened, while it was still soft, the king would impress his signet ring with the emblem of his kingdom upon that wax so that the person who received this message would know, one, the message hadn't been opened or tampered with because the seal is unbroken, and two, would know that this message, even without opening it, has come from that particular king and that particular kingdom with that particular emblem because nobody else could have put the seal of approval on that message. That's what Jesus is saying here in verse 27. God the Father, not just some earthly king, but the heavenly king, God the Father, the creator of the universe, has given me the seal of his approval. So when I tell you these things, when I tell you to focus on imperishable things instead of perishable, eternal things instead of the things that aren't going to last of this world, that message doesn't just come from me, a carpenter's kid from Nazareth, Jesus is saying. It comes from from my Father in heaven, the creator of the universe. He has put his seal of approval upon my words. So I want you to believe in me. The people asked him, verse 28, well, that's fine. We want to perform God's works too. So what should we do? 
are having a conversation where they're just missing each other. Jesus responds because he insists on trying to lift them up, the crowd, and see things from God's perspective. This is the only work God wants from you. Believe, and it's going to change your vision. Believe and you'll see things that you would otherwise miss. Believe in the one that he has sent. So then the response come, which just had to be maddening for Jesus. Like, uh, you've got to be kidding me. Here's what somebody in the crowd said, or a bunch of them said. Well, then show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. I've shown you five miraculous signs already. And there's no way you could have missed hearing about the big public event of feeding 5,000 people. Even if you missed the wedding in Cana, the turning of water into wine, and the two physical healings that I did of people who were sick, you you had to hear about the feeding of the 5,000, the fourth signer. Or, Or maybe the disciples were already buzzing about me walking on the water in the Sea of Galilee. You want a sign? I just gave you a sign. But Jesus holds his patience. And he responds to them. He said, I tell you the truth. You're looking for a sign like what Moses provided uh, for your ancestors who wandered through the wilderness on their way to a new life in the promised land. I tell you the truth. Moses isn't the one who gave them bread from heaven. My father gave it to them. And now my father in heaven offers you the true bread from heaven. God is the one to believe in, not Moses, not some prophet, Not some Christian pastor or or blogger or podcaster or preacher or author or musician. God, the Father, is the one to believe in. Follow him and put your faith and belief in him. Whoever comes to me, Jesus says, will never be hungry again because I am the bread of life. And there it is. The first of seven famous I am statements in the Gospel of John that Jesus makes to announce his identity. So in John's gospel, Jesus' identity statements, his I am statements are starting to be layered in with his seven signs, which reveal his nature and his ability, his limitless ability. I am the bread of life. I'm more than somebody who's here to just feed crowds and walk on water and heal the sick and turn water into wine. I'm here to provide for you. I'm not here to rain down bread from heaven for you. Jesus is saying, I am the bread from heaven. I am the manna that God provides. I am the one with his seal of approval. And if you follow me and believe in me, you'll never be hungry again. Then Jesus kicks it up a whole nother notch. And this is where the story gets very real, as the cool kids would say. Jesus says, You know this is Passover time, and you know the old covenant. Now there's going to be a new covenant, and it's Passover time again. The next time Passover comes, Jesus will sit down in the upper room with his disciples and share a last supper, and he'll take the bread and the wine of the Passover meal, and he'll say, new deal, new covenant, new testament in my blood. This Passover bread is now my body, and this Passover wine is now my blood. Eat this bread and drink this blood. Now, if we aren't following Jesus and we aren't following the progression of, his, of the movement here and the language he's using is the word of God, and we're just catching it by itself, eat your flesh, your body, drink your blood, that's way too hard to understand. And a little bit over the top, Jesus. But they're completely missing the point. I hope you won't. I hope you'll believe because when you believe, you start to see. That Jesus is the one who quenches our thirst for life, so we'll never be thirsty again. He satisfies our hunger for life, so we'll never be hungry again. I am the bread of life for you. I am the God who provides for you. I am not just a prophet who announces God's message to the world. I am this God for you. And as you get to know me, you'll get to know him. I am the king of all kings who puts my seal into you. This is my body. This is my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, a mark and a sign of eternal life. It's difficult for some in the crowd to hear it, and that's where we'll pick it up tomorrow, because this is where the rubber hits the road. Man, it just keeps getting better. We'll see you tomorrow. 
like, review, and share on whatever platform you're using. That helps us get the word out. And join us for weekend worship. You can go to lutheranchurchofhope.org to find out how. We'll see you there. Bye.